Hi, this is Passy's World of ICT with our basic soccer game, and this is made in Scratch, and we'll just show you quickly how the finished game will work. Okay, so the guy's hitting the ball, but if he misses, ah! there's the pain of missing. All right then, let's get started with building this in Scratch. All right then, here's the opening screen in Scratch, and the first thing we need to do is click onto the scissors up here at the top, and we'll just delete out the cat, because we're not using him in this animation. Now, let's go down the bottom here on stage and work on that one first. So we'll just click on stage, and over here we've got scripts, backgrounds, and sounds. Now we need to go to backgrounds, and we can edit this stage background, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is just pick some green, get the paint bucket fill tool here and fill it all in green. That's our basic playing field. Now we're also gonna need an out of bounds line. So what we're gonna to do to do that is click on the rectangle tool and set the color to um, a kind of a white color. And down in here, we're just gonna draw this kind of um, out of bounds line, all right? We're just gonna mark the end of the field. So we've got that in there and that's pretty much our background done. So we'll just click okay on that. Now, next thing is to bring in the sprites we're using in this game. So we go to uh, the star folder here to import. Now, we've got some sprites uh, set up. What we did was we went to Google Images, we found a soccer ball and a soccer player. And in Photoshop, we've, um, made those so that they're a lot smaller, okay? So we've got um, to pick which one this is, and this is a bit of a problem with Scratch in that we can't see the full name. Now, I think it's this one here that's 45 by 39 big. Yep, that's our guy. So we'll just grab him and put him in position. He's going to be moving along the bottom here. Now, I've got a bit of residual kind of um, white stuff here, even though we did try and erase this background in fireworks and save it as a GIF. So what we need to do is be clicked on to that sprite, and we'll just rename him first thing up here in the middle, and he's going to be the kicker. And to edit him, we need to go to costumes and See, we made him 45 by 39 bytes. Sprites need to be probably about 50 by 50 in Scratch. So we'll just edit this guy. And you can see here that residual gray. Now, if we get the eraser tool, what we can do is we can just kind of click, click in there carefully um, and just take that away. All right, the rest of him looks pretty clean. So that's probably, I think there's one more spot there I need to get. Uh, maybe one just there. So if we say okay now, uh, you can see back on the stage here, he's looking pretty good. All right, the next thing to do is to import our soccer ball. So the soccer ball we're gonna use is um, this one, but even though we got rid of the, um, you know, background here that's white, in fireworks for some reason on this GIF um, scratch just doesn't want to do that and it's left it white so first thing up the top here we'll just rename that and that's going to be the ball so we'll call that ball and we need to click on costumes like we did on the other guy and go into edit and this one is going to be really tricky we'll bump up the magnification here um, get out the eraser and we need to really carefully click in here now it's pretty cool because the eraser has kind of got these notches in it so that you can kind of line up um, with your items on the ball now i won't um, bore you of all the details of this, but basically I'm going to work my way around that ball um, where all these sort of white bits are and there isn't checkered flag. I need to erase them and make them into checkered flag, which is transparent. So I'll just uh, pause the video while we do this, okay? All right, so I've been right around that soccer ball with the eraser and I'll just click OK now. And if we look over on the um, stage here, that's looking pretty good. All right, the um, next thing we need to do is to... Um, start writing some scripts. All right, so let's work on the kicker first. We'll just kick on him. Click on him, sorry, not kick on him. And over here, we'll get out of costumes now because we finished editing that guy and we'll go to scripts. All right. All right, now we need some scripts to move this guy left to right along that baseline. So into the orange control blocks, uh, when clicked, 
and we need a forever if <coughs> and we need sensing next so we click on the light blue one and we want to know if the key is being pressed see how this is a diamond shape it'll slot into that block there and the one we want is if the right arrow is being pressed and if the right arrow is pressed we want to do some motion so we go actually back to these darker blue ones motion and we want to change the X um, uh, by 10. All right, so that'll move the guy along 10. So there is another way of doing this, which I'll just show you. You can go when clicked, and you can go um, when, instead of using actually the green arrow, you can go when the left arrow is pressed, all right, and then just have your motion. Click back on the blue ones here, and we want to change the X. Um, to the left, so we need to use minus 10 on that. But an interesting thing happens, we'll just test this out now by using the green flag over here. Um, what happens is our guy is very slow to remove, to uh, move on turning, all right? He goes to the right, we now click the left arrow, it's very slow for him to um, change direction, right? He changes okay one way, but not the other. Back on the script here, Doing it this way is too slow for games, okay? So we're just gonna take that um, and slide it over here and discard it, um, take it away. Now, on this one we can right click and we can go duplicate, all right? So then we'll just put it under here and this time we need the left arrow, so click on there and change that to left arrow and we wanna move it um, backwards down the x-axis or to the left, so you need to use negative numbers here, so we say change x by and put a minus in front of that 10. All right, let's test that out, and great, we've got our guy moving. All right, the next step now is to click onto the ball and start some scripting on the ball to get the ball moving. Right then, let's get started on these scripts on the ball. Uh, first thing we need is the control and when the green flag is clicked and the game starts. Let's go to the blue motion. What we need to do here is we are going to set X to zero and we are going to set Y to zero. What that'll do is position the ball in the middle of the screen to start off with. Then we need to point the ball. Um, we just need to say point um, that ball uh, and make it start moving towards the kicker guy. So we don't use point in direction, we use point towards, and then we can pull down this menu and it can pick up the kicker sprite, and we'll have that. All right, the next thing we need is a control, and that's a forever um, loop that we need. Okay, and forever we need to <coughs> move that ball along, so we're going to move the ball uh, just a little slower than the guy moves. We're going to move nine steps, all right? So let's try that code out here and see what's happening. So the ball came towards the guy, but then it just kept going and it's landed in the corner, all right? So what we need is something else to put in there later on for when it um, hits the guy, but what we need at the moment is some bouncing, all right? So we go down and get this one uh, in the blue motion that's if on edge bounce and you put that in there. All right, now let's try it now and see the ball is bouncing around the screen. Whenever it hits an edge of the screen, it rebounds and keeps going. So that's going um, really well at this stage. Okay then, let's get this uh, guy kicking the ball. Now we don't actually put the script onto the kicker, we put it onto the ball. All right, so we're gonna need a when clicked and a forever if loop. And in the if loop, we need this um, kicking to happen when the ball touches the kicker. So we're going to sensing here, the light blue ones, and we're getting the touching one at the top here and bringing that into that diamond shape. So forever, if the ball is touching the kicker, uh, we need to do things. Now what we need to do is turn the ball around to point in the opposite direction. So we go to motion and we use point in direction. 
All right, but here we're going to do, we're going to turn the ball around 180 degrees. Now, how we do this is um, kind of interesting. If we go into operators, the green button up here, uh, we need a subtraction operator, which is this second one, which might be hard to see, and we're going to put that in there. And now go back to motion, and in motion you can pick up something down the very bottom here called direction. So we pick that up and put that into our first box. So we want to point in direction, the ball's current direction, and then we want to subtract away from that 180 degrees. All right, so what that's going to do is it's going to point the ball in a direction. It's going to take whatever direction that ball's coming now when it hit the kicker and turn it round by 180 degrees because we're subtracting 180 off there. All right, now let's just try that out quickly and see uh, what happens. So this is good. All right, the guy can hit the ball if I was a bit more coordinated. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and the ball can go. All right, that's good. Now, we want to sound here um, when it hits the ball. Now, I won't go through the details here, but I found or sort of figured out that if you play a bass drum, an acoustic bass drum, that kind of makes quite a good ball sort of sound. So off the pink sound ones here, I've just picked that up. And I don't know if you can hear that. All right, so we've got the sound happening. Okay then, the last thing we need to do now is if the guy misses the ball and it goes across this white out of bounds line, uh, we need something to happen. Now, how we set that up is we do it again on the ball sprite. So we're continuing our scripts on the ball strike sprite and bringing out a when clicked. And we need a forever if Okay, and the forever if here is that if it is um, touching a color, so we actually go to sensing and we use the second one down, touching color, and we slide that into the diamond. And this is pretty cool. You can pick, click on the current color there and that'll give you an eyedrop point and then you take that over and point it onto the white line and it'll pick up that color. So this is going to work out if the ball has touched that white line, well then what we need to do is just have the ball tell the person they've lost and to stop everything. So we go to these purple ones and we use say command and instead of saying hello we're just going to say you lose with an exclamation mark and we'll just put that at three seconds. Now again uh, we then want to stop the game completely so we go to the control the orange blocks and down the very bottom if we scroll here is the stop all button. All right now we also wanted to have um, a sound in there like sort of screaming or disappointment or something. In the sounds there's actually um, a sound we can import. Now I'll just try and do this quickly. We play sound and there's no sounds at the moment so you click on that and you say record and then we go up here to import and if we go in the sounds and go to the human ones here there's one called um, scream mail one <coughs> all right so that sounds pretty good so we're just going to say okay on that and that's brought our sound in and on the sound recorder we say okay now we need to actually go back to the scripts and we can now play that sound screen mail one because we've bought it in it's now available let's just try that out again yeah. all right so that's good now we're going to put that one in um just here uh before we stop now it's, that sound is a little bit loud so we're going to have a set volume we're going to pull that out across here and just set the volume down a bit on that sound um to 50 percent all right, so that's pretty much our code finished now. Let's try out this game and see how it goes. All right, so the guy's hitting the ball. We're getting the sound. Now, let's just miss here. Okay, let's just miss here. I can miss. I'm too good. All right. We didn't get the sound playing. Okay, so we're going to have to uh, just check that out and see what's wrong there. I'll just pause the video while I do that. 
All right, the problem's actually down here in the order that we're doing things. We need to pull all those blocks out and just reorder them quickly. We actually need to play the sound first and then have the ball um, give the lose message. Yeah. If we um, change that round here and re-slot those blocks in, uh, let's just play this quickly. Yeah. Okay, so that's all finished and working fine.